And hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Darkfall the Journal. I am Dennis. I am Tan Staple the Paleo Gamer, and I am your host. Now, if you remember last time, we had just finished going through the um, downstairs areas of the hotel, and I may as well go ahead and get started, so hang on a second here. Okay, here we are. If you last remember, we were on our way upstairs to the hotel when we came across a haunting on the second floor, which was, you know, ooh, spooky, and we decided to break there. But now we're going to go on up. We're up on the third floor of the hotel here, and we're going to continue on into the attic because that's just where it makes the most sense for us to be somehow. A painting of a British king here. It's Henry VIII. All right, we're going all the way up to the attic. Now, you may wonder why I left the lobby and came all the way to the attic. Well, it actually just so happens that if you go through the hotel in the normal way, that is, do the ground floor, then the first floor, then the second floor, then the third floor, you'll be finding a lot of puzzles and things you don't have the clues or the things you need to get through the game with yet and you actually can do things more efficiently if you go to the furthest part of the hotel and then come back down. Now you may be doing a few things you don't know quite why you're doing them but hey you know it's gonna make things a little easier for us in the long run. So we're up here in the attic and the main thing you see in the attic is this big tank here. Now we have to get started by going to the far side of this tank and what we do is we turn this valve now, you may have just heard something ignite. What that is, this is a hot water heater. And the gas jets are now on, so it's now heating up. And I now have to send the hot water down to a lower floor. Now, the way I do this is I need to go to this floor. I turn this valve, and I watch this needle up here. And as soon as that needle gets into the red zone, I do that. Um, I don't need to do anything with any of the others. Um, again, it's not clear why I'm doing that. It's going to become important later. So, um, yeah, you are discovering things a little out of order here, but it... Creek. Okay. That kind of just makes things easier. Now, also up here in the attic, there is this... Weird whispers. Okay. Now there's a suitcase here that's locked and we can't get it open. Now we have a screwdriver and we're going to use the screwdriver to pry it open. Now you can move this screwdriver around a couple of different ways. Basically, if you click on it, it just moves. There we go. Just wiggle it back and forth a bit. Then, and it will open. All right, there's things in here. The only book we can really pick up is a lot of The Sound of the Fury, uh, P.G. Wodehouse, is this one, The War of the Worlds. When they told it on the radio, it terrified the whole country. Yes, that was the Orson Welles Halloween broadcast, presumably, but the book is, of course, much older than that. Um, the main thing in here is we have this note. Um, the note is actually from George and George Crabtree. And what the note says that he's sneaking around the hotel, hiding things in secret places, and he can't tell anyone except for Arthur. And he wants help. Um, he's leaving notes for someone. Presumably he knows that something's going to be coming after him. Um, I thought I was a student enough to realize that your being here means that it is fed again. Was it you? What is it that he's talking about? Do not pity me. Will we ever rid ourselves of this miscreation? The ancients understood the nature of this beast and succeeded in trapping it here. What more can I lend you? My journal, if you have not read it, will inform you how. Arthur and I released our opponent. I hope it is of some use to you. 
So basically, George knew something bad was going to happen. We also have this. It's another one of those symbols. You remember the symbol from um, that stone column down under the barn. And he says the lyric for this symbol is Olivac, or Oliviac, or some, however you pronounce that word. So again, we see a symbol and a word associated with it. So again, we need to keep track of all that. That's really the only thing we get out of this. So I can close that. And we can leave the attic. There is a Ouija board up here in one corner of the attic. Um, it's not really important, but if you want to spend some time playing with the Ouija board, there is one up there. All right. This is kind of a storage room. There's some notes here. Um, one of the notes, it's from Betty Penfold. It is to her mother, um, Edith. And she talks about how there's the water tank is playing up again. That's the thing we just messed with. Um, something is missing. Things are missing from the hotel. She's not sure what it is. And she complains that her mother is playing her, listening to her music so loud, and she can't practice. So that's different. The daughter is complaining to her mother that the music is too loud. But keep that in mind. Over here, there's just a list of what they have, some other notes. None of these are really important. That's just things here. Over here, we have a teapot. Now, if you remember, when we picked up that phone way down in the lobby of the um, train station, we heard from Nigel, one of the ghost hunters, that he had left a key in a teapot. Well, look at that. It's a key. So this is obviously the key Nigel wanted us to find. And I didn't open that door. It just opened all by itself. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure that's perfectly safe and nothing to be worried about. Now, it's a little confusing here. We kind of popped into a weird place. That's the door we just came out of. So we now want to go into this door. This is a bathroom, obviously. Um, now, the thing here is if I spin around this way, I can get a close-up look at this mirror. And notice I can move the mirror. Now, right now the mirror is reflecting this light. If I flip over to the left, where it is reflecting that light, it is making a pattern on the wall. And we see these collection of numbers, 20, 90, 5, and 40. Now again, the game is not going to remember these for us. It is not going to tell us, rem remind me of, us of these numbers when we get to them, or anything like that, we just need to remember that they are what they were, and they were in this pattern, and they were here. So they will become important later. Who has left that there anyway? I mean, how is that? I guess somebody wrote it on the wall? Whatever. So let's head on down the... Did you see that? A little ball of light just flew out that door. Huh. Okay. Okay, let's start looking around in here, and let's start with this room. Now, this is actually Edith Penfold's room. This was Betty's mother. She was the proprietress of the hotel. And we can look at different things here. And notice, like your brother said in his notes, this thing has been left completely undisturbed all these years. Why is eating in wartime? And this, which is a journal. Now this is obviously Edith and her husband Frank. Frank seems to be dead. Um, this is Edith. Here's Betty. You know, we've heard about her. There she's talking about Frank as her husband in Hastings. Um, they played our tune that night at the Castle Hotel. And then Frank went and bought a copy of at the music shop the next day. I've still got it. So there's obviously 
they played our tune. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Some pictures on the wall here. Are you the one carrying on George's work? If so, you should know that there are 12 of those weird symbols. I had one, Betty had one. The guests have one each too. Not all of them remain anymore. Lost, destroyed, or taken. It knows what you're doing, you'll have to be careful. My symbol is in my room, you'll find it. If you have a song in your heart, can you sing? I love a good song. Frank loved a good song too, bless him. I'm going now. The others are waiting. They're waiting for you too. Listen, love, don't join them. It already has your brother. Pete, isn't it? Sad it is. So young. It's not right. It's listening now to everything I tell you. You'd better be careful. Yeah. Uh, should we be worried that we're getting instructions from Ghost now? Well... So again, this is confirming we need to find the 12 symbols and the words that go with them, and hers is hidden in this room. Now what do we have over here? Eh, it's kind of an old room. Remember, she still has the song music that um, Frank bought for her. Well, they were in Hastings, and one of the songs on here is Own Hastings Pier. And obviously Hastings is important to her. So I wonder if the second song here is important to her. So, why don't we do this? Let's back out of this and look at her music player here. Let's wind it up and turn it on. And it's turning now, whether you can tell or not. Now remember how Betty complained in her note that she played her music too loud? Let's turn it all the way up. And we want to play the second song, because that's on Hastings Pier. So the first song starts there. If I just go over to the left. See how it's dropping in and out? First song, second song. I wonder what that was about. There's something hidden in here. Now this is from George to Edith. Hide this scrap in a safe place and he basically tells you here what's going on. Arthur and I disturbed something, something that should have stayed dormant. Arthur has taken the secret to the grave, so Arthur is dead. I am not so lucky. I have divided the only key to our salvation into pieces. I have given a piece to each of you and the guest. It was the only way of guarding its location from the evil which stalks us. My research is our only chance. Remember this word. Ixium or Ixium. A strange word I know, and for the morning and by the morning you can forget it for good, if I am successful. Do not open your door this night unless you know who for sure who it is that actually calls on you. So this was obviously a note he left the last night, the night that everyone in the hotel vanished. Now remember Edith was one of the few people who survived. And the other thing we have in here is that no symbol. So that symbol is XCM. We know that now. So let's back out and the picture just miraculously went back to the wall. It's a miracle. All right. Okay, we're done in here now. Just another thing about Another little. Now we can't go into this room because you notice that it wants something that we don't have yet. So we're going to skip it for now. Instead, we're going to go on down to here. Okay. We go into the room here on the right. Now there's a radio in here, and you can tune the radio around if you like. But there's no reason to. It doesn't really give us anything. We have a newspaper here, which tells us about the missing Timothy Pike, but 
we already knew about him. And oh look, floods expected. Where there was a book about floods. And over here, we have Ghost Myths and Legends of the Southeast. Now, the main thing it, you have about here is that back in 1647, a soldier named Tom Oliver disappeared somewhere outside of Dowerton. And he, the area where he disappeared is where Gabriel Crabtree decided to build a new inn. They also talk about how there are prehistoric stone monuments in this area. Hmm, I think we found one of those. So basically, whatever's been going on here has been going on for a long time. Someone named Tom Oliver disappeared, you know, literally centuries ago. Okay, that was just some background information. There was no puzzles in there. Now let's go across the hall and go into this room. Now this is... Hmm, those lights just changed. And notice the... our little ghost thing is showing. This is Betty Penfold's room. Betty, if you know, was the, um... was the daughter. Now she had a trumpet. Remember she talked about having to practice her music? She had a trumpet. And her trumpet... Um, it's not letting me pick that up. Now we can get... She makes a note of several notes here that she needs to um, practice, as she puts it. The um, notes there, if you can't read piano music, that is GGABC. So that's where she needs to practice. Oops. Turned away. You can also look at this dresser here. And one of the things on this dresser is this metronome. Now you notice we're hearing a metronome even though it's not moving. So let's turn on the metronome. And this letter appears. She's talking to a note about sending a note to someone named Thomas. Now Thomas is her lover. She and she and Betty and Thomas are carrying on an affair with each other, and apparently neither of their parents are really keen on that little relationship. And Thomas is hiding somewhere in the hotel, and she is going to come visit him later. So, yes, we have two young lovers carrying on an affair. It's almost like a Romeo and Juliet. And we have some sheet music here, since she's obviously a musician. Strips of sheet music like the one we had seen earlier. And that's really about all we can do in here for now. So let's continue on to the next step, a couple of rooms. Let's remember those things we got in there, like that scrap of paper with the GGABC and the fact that someone named Thomas is staying at the hotel somewhere. Alright, there's all kinds of stuff here. Let's go into room A here. All right. Now, this happens to be Arthur's studio. You've heard us mention Arthur a couple of times, and he's an artist, obviously. He's a very good friend of George Crabtree. This is George, in case you were interested. Um, and he did a lot of... You know, well, let's not look at that for a while. He did a lot of paintings of George and that sort of thing. Um, you can tell that was one of his favorite subjects. Obviously, they were very good friends of each other. More pictures of George. And there's a little piece of paper under here. We can, should probably take that because, you know, you never know when those sort of things are going to come in handy in a game like this. Um, the main things we need to look at over here in this room are down here. Now, down under this cabinet. We have up here Arthur's Magic Lemon Ink and some turpentine. And we also have this note. 
Now notice that this node is um, obviously in some sort of code. It's um, what they call a, um, I believe they call that a Caesar cipher anyway. Um, the node's from someone, it's from George, and we can assume, since we keep hearing about Arthur, that this is Arthur up here, because we just saw Arthur's Magic Lemon Inc. So if you make that assumption, A is Z, R is I, T is G, and so on. Um, basically, if you start trying to work on this, you will find it's a simple code. A is Z, B is Y, X is W, R, C is W, and so on. And you can translate this. Now, the game won't do it for you, uh, unfortunately. The game um, expects you to do it on paper on your own. But what this letter translates to is... Um, Arthur, I think it would be wise to write our records and drawings using your invisible ink. I do not want the others to know of our plans just yet. Yours, George. So, we have something about invisible ink here in Lemon. Now, some of you may already know, or may remember, that you can write invisible notes in Lemon Juice. And when you expose it to heat, the hidden message will become visible. So let's try that. Turn that on. And then up here we have a little stove. And it's another teapot, but not one with a key in it. Now, let's take the one piece of paper we have that we had picked up a few minutes ago. And, oh look, there is something written on it. There are four names and four words. Now, Edith, we knew about. That's Edith Penfold, Ixium. We saw her lyric in that word hidden in her room. But the others are new. Betty has something called Taima. Fly, that's Matilda Fly. We really haven't met her yet. She has Morcana. Gloria Grable, who also we haven't met yet, has Phrenic, and we knew about Edith. So these are four more of the lyrics that we need for whatever it is we're trying to do here. So that's just more of them. Now we could go across and go in this room across the hall right now, but we're going to back up a second. Um, I'm going to go back up here. Remember the room right up here that we couldn't get into earlier and I said we had to get something else first? Well that's this room. Now what we needed, or the problem here, is that the door is locked and the key is in the keyhole. So we need to get it out. But like you've probably heard in a dozen mystery movies by now, stick a piece of paper under the door, use the screwdriver to knock the key out, and there it is. Now here's the only question I have. How did the person in this room get out? I mean... I mean, if the door was locked from the inside, how did they get out? They went out the window, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, this is George Crabtree's room, and there's a lot of information here that will tell you what's going on. Now, there's a lot of notes here, um, and, you know, we can look at all this stuff. Uh, the main thing here, remember, the disappearances all took place on the 29th of April, 1947. Here they're talking about the notorious lady bank robber, Sly Fox. And there's a note over here where he's talking about Gloria Grable, and is obviously trying different variations on that name. And he's concerned about the suspicious nature of the very expensive car, obviously the one in the garage. And there's a note to Edith. Um, this is George's journal. Now, I'm not going to try to read everything in this journal right now. And so I'm going to summarize it for you. Basically, George and his friend Arthur, um, um, George and his friend Arthur, um, were exploring the hotel. They were looking for something called were some evidence of what happened to Tom Oliver. You may remember Tom Oliver from the book we saw in the other room. 
Tom Oliver disappeared here in the 1600s. Well, what he finds out is that this hotel was built on that same area, and it was built on some of these old ancient ruins. And so when they were exploring, they found out that there was indeed something here. There was indeed the remains of a... Um, move these out of the way. I don't have to cover them up. You know, they found the ancient ruins down under the barn, probably the same ones we saw. And um, while they were looking down there, they found something. They found an entity of some kind that George eventually calls the Dark Fall. Now, while they are exploring, um, it appears they somehow let it out. Um, one of the things they mentioned finding is a... Um, one of the things they mentioned finding is a sheet of vellum that had 12 symbols on it. And while handling the 12, handling that paper, George heard 12 words. They came to him and he wrote them down. He called these the lyrics that went with the symbols. Now then, while they are exploring this, or while all this is going on, World War II is going on, it's 1944. And Arthur decides that he is going to go join the war effort. And Arthur says he's going to join the war effort. George tries to convince him not to, but Arthur is insistent and he goes anyway. While he is in the war, Arthur is killed and George is distraught. George, Arthur was very obviously a very close friend of Arthur's. Or George and Arthur were very close friends. They may have been more than friends. It's never quite um, explained exactly how deep the relationship between them was. But it is obviously they had a very deep and serious relationship. Um, George decides he's going to try to f bring Arthur back. He thinks that the entity that they had found, the entity that was trapped under the hotel, was capable of returning Arthur from the dead. And he released it in order to do that, and it betrayed him. He has now let an evil thing out into the world, and he must try to stop it. Now, he thinks there's a way to do it. He thinks there's a way to get rid of it. The Dark Fall, as he calls it. Um, he thinks that he can do something with the lyrics and the symbols that he had found, the stuff from that piece of paper, and he thinks he can do something about it. He has mentions a series of trials that one has to go through to help seal the dark fall. Now one of them he talks about, I have hidden the key to the first trial within a bed cover that Edith has made for him. It is unique, such colors she could almost have seen the aura itself, and he mentions the um, this symbol with it, one, two, three, four. So he talks about a bed cover that she makes. Second trial is less clear. They conjure the sounds of the earth. I will break this riddle. Then the third trial awaits. And he talks about on April 26th, he's already. I ripped the lyrics in 12 pieces and he distributed it among the everyone in the hotel. The bar will be full in three nights' time. Edith has planned another music night. And he's lost a lyric, but he thinks there's a way to do it and he to recover it. And this little symbol here shows it. And on the 29th, he goes out. I'll take my second journal with me. Um, I have given the existing symbols to Edith, Betty, Vernie, and the rest. Um, and he goes on. So basically, what we have to worry about is there are three trials. We know the mystery of the first trial is somehow in a bed cover. The second trial, he talks about the sounds of nature. And the third trial is unspecified. We don't know about it yet. But then we know that the 12 symbols and the words that go with them, the lyrics, are important. Well, that could be something here. This is the same thing that we saw before. The wall carving, the ordering we had seen before. This is where we looked through those holes and saw those. That's the thing we saw. And we had the Magic Lantern slide index, but 2, 3, and 7 are missing. But that's not too important at this point. Let's turn the um, 
slide projector on here. Well, I actually have to open this first, then I can turn the slide projector on. Now, we can look at these. There are different slides here showing some sort of, looks like an expedition to somewhere. I'm not quite sure what this is. But the third one here is interesting, because right here in the third one, this guy is holding one of the symbols. Okay. Now that was, I called it the third one, that's really the fifth slide because two and three are missing. And if you remember, slide number five is Mortem. So now we know the lyric for that symbol, that it symbol is Mortem. So again, let's remember that. Now the only other thing in this room of interest is over here. There's a little kinescope here, a little thing to let you look at movies. You know, George was obviously into photography and that sort of thing. If I look in here, we can see a possible haunting. And that's, oh look, there's one of those little glowing balls of light like we had seen. We saw one of those ourselves in the hallway. The second one shows us a different haunting. Now this is a room we haven't been to before, but you notice there's things coming up out of the floor. So something's got to do with the floor in that room. Now the third symbol, or the third kinescope, is kind of a small one. It's a um, study of local trees, so we just can see some trees. A film by George Crabtree. It's just trees. The last one is interesting. The last one is labeled Trial 2. Remember the second trial? And he says it was the sounds. But we have a fire, lightning, the sky, probably wind or rain, and the ocean, water. So we just remember those. You know, fire, lightning, wind or rain, and the ocean or water. Okay. And that's really all we have to do in this room. Now, if you remember, there was a door, you know, I skipped that last door, I came back to here. Let's go look at that last room, and then we'll be done with the third floor. This was actually George's room. This is where George lived. Um, look at a couple of things up here. There's a book on alchemy and a book that talks about the nature of various elements. Water, chalk, bronze, wood, sandstone, and mercury. Now, also in this room, there's something hidden in this bedpost here. He talks about the words. He says, I have prepared a letter in case of failure. Edith should find it. I guess that's the letter that we saw on his desk, but you notice we couldn't open it. And this is obviously the note he wrote before he went to face the Dark Fall. Now, here he looks like he talked to the British Museum about the a warning to the curious, to the uh, British Museum about the cave he found, and they didn't appear interested. The main thing in here is this little box here. Now, this has the pictures of various kings and queens of England on it. Now, remember I commented on that picture of Henry VIII? That's Henry VIII, and this is Henry V, even if you don't recognize him, and that opened by itself. Now, in here, he's complaining that one of the lyrics has been lost. Now, he also mentioned that in some other notes. So he lost one of the lyrics. He has to figure out what it is again. So he talks about how the alchemical guidelines and dictionaries will help him. And he also has this, which is just half of a picture. Now, obviously, it's a table. There's a drawing on it and something in the middle, and he has two symbols here. One is labeled chalk and one is labeled bronze. 
Now notice chalk is just to the right of where those two lines come together, and bronze is right on the right end of where those two lines come together. So obviously that's important. And where those come into play is actually right here. See, this is obviously the thing we had before. Now we call this, this is the chalk one, it kind of to the right of where those lines came together, and I'm sure this is bronzed. Yes, that one, that one. It's like it would go there where those lines came together. I don't know. Anyway, that's kind of what we're going to need to do. The problem is we don't know where to put these two or what order to do them in because that picture was torn in half. So hopefully we'll find somewhere to somewhere the, the other picture is and then we can come back and do this. It's the only thing we have to do out of order. We have to come back up here for that one thing. And basically that's the third floor. We've now finished what we need to do up here. Um, and I went the wrong way. So we're going to go down to the second floor here. Um, and we're going to call this a stop at this point because we've been going for about 30 or 40 minutes now so this is getting to be a good stopping point. When we come back we will continue with our investigations into Darkfall the Journal and we will explore the second floor of the Station Hotel. Until then, I am Dennis, I am Tanstaffel the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time.